How did I take this bucket of unwanted thrift store found rolling pins and transform them into these? This is what today's video is all about. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I've, I got a DIY for you. Oh my gosh, if you are new to my channel, I am obsessed with rolling pins. When I am out thrifting, I just can't pass a rolling pin up. Now, not all of them are vintage. Not all of them can I fix to make them look vintage. So I have a horde of rolling pins that I'm like, ah, what do I do with them? And when I had toured Shipshawana Flea Market, I ran across a booth that had some rolling pins that were vintage and they had some vintage labeling on them. And ever since I have been on a search for figuring out how to create that label. Now the problem is, is I'm not a graphic designer. I know nothing about any of that. So through my searches on Etsy and my Pinterest searches and trying to figure out how to do these labels on these um, I finally ran across a few businesses on Etsy that had some that I was happy with. So in today's video, I'm sharing with you how I downloaded downloaded images onto my computer. I printed them off on paper, vintage paper, and then I transformed these rolling pins into look like primitive art. Here is my inspiration for this whole video. I not only do I love rolling pins, but oh my gosh, old labels on top of rolling pins. Yes, please. So this is what today's video is all about. So if you are new to my channel or you are a regular viewer, you already know that I have a rolling pin obsession. I absolutely love vintage rolling pins. I collect them myself. I resell them. But when I'm out thrifting, sometimes I just cannot pass a rolling pin by. Now, these are just random rolling pins. They're newer. They're not vintage. So these are the rolling pins that I will be making over. Now, I am not a graphic design artist by any means to be able to come up with the design on the computer, that is not me. But on Etsy, there are lots of people that have beautiful labels. Now, this did take me quite a while because I knew that I wanted it to be something that has to do with a rolling pin, something to do with flour, something to do with pies and biscuits and cookies and all that so it took me a little hot minute to be able to find what the idea that was in my head so i went to etsy i googled i changed the wording i did so many wording between pinterest and etsy trying to find just what i was looking for so sometimes you just have to settle so it wasn't exactly what was in my head but when it came to etsy what it is it's a digital download so you buy it for two three dollars and then it's downloaded into your computer so perfect now i only have to buy it once it's always there in my computer I can size it, I can print it off, change it on the paper. That whole idea is just marvelous to me. So for a couple dollars, if you compare that to your stamps, your stencils, hey, it's, when it comes to crafting and reselling, I absolutely love the idea of helping a small business like somebody that's on Etsy selling their digital downloads is perfect to me. Well, first you'll get an email confirming that your order and that everything has gone through. And then it will give you another area to where you can go back onto Etsy, you go back into your cart and then there they all are. I can go in and then I can hit download and then they'll be saved into my computer. So then here they are in my downloads and now I'm making a little folder so I can put all these images in so I know what they are or where to go looking for them. When you actually click on one of the images, you're able to print it off. You can change it just depending on what your knowledge is or what kind of computer you have. And then I did do a couple of the copy and paste I found this image, I liked it, but there was no place that I could buy it or anything like that. It was a vintage sack. So I just did a copy and paste, looking for some more, I wanted a little bit more flower, vintage flower labels. Like I said, it wasn't as easy to find what my vision in my head was by any means. 
Now to print these off, I just didn't want to use regular copy paper. So there was this pad of paper on Amazon that was very vintage, all rough. And so it's a, it's a little bit thicker than a copier paper, but it has that nice antique that I'm going for. And then along with some other cardstock that I've had forever, I always have this paper sack color cardstock on hand. When it came to printing these out, I printed out a few different on different papers on some of the heavier cardstock. So, you know, as to play with them to see which labels, don't worry, I won't be throwing away. I'll be like storing these for another later date. But I definitely had the pieces and parts that I wanted to use, but I needed to see what I thought or what I felt would look the best on my rolling pins. So now I have to figure out which ones I want to use and which ones I need to cut out. <laughs> but I'm just going to be using my little Cricut cutter to get these nice and straight. If you have a steady hand and you can cut with scissors, you go for it. But I, I need the assistance of this cutter. But I will share with you, not every one of the images that I printed can you just start going to town with the Cricut cutter. <laughs> was like, oh, well, that one will cut into that one. So sometimes I do have to go in with the scissors and just cut out the ones I want and then make that nice straight line with the Cricut cutter. And I did want to share that I had to sharpen my blade up a little bit. I use this little cutter a lot. It seems to be my go-to, but every once in a while it starts to you know, starts ripping the paper. So just some aluminum foil I've learned and a few cuts here and there and that blade will get sharpened. I yet again always look to make sure there's not a piece of paper that has gotten bound up on it. But usually it just needs a little sharpening and for some reason the aluminum foil works. So I think I thrifted most of these rolling pins in between the 99 cent and the 409 cent. So definitely cost efficient for me printing things out and what I'm going to be doing them today. So, but of course we got to remove labels and we got to clean them off. My first step in this process is going to be mod podging on the labels that I had printed out that I had just cut out. So I'm just I'm just kind of really eyeballing where everything needs to go. Now the cardstock is a lot thicker than that copying paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on the pot back of it. Instead of trying to center it and all that, I'm just going to go ahead and just put it right on the back of this cardstock first. And then when I get it down, I'm kind of eyeballing that it is level. And then I'll take a ruler, double checking that it is even from side to side. To help down with the gluing process on this cardstock, I'm going to be just using some press and seal, just something to wrap to make sure, kind of acting as a clamp, something to press that cardstock down onto that rolling pin until the glue dries. So I will admit I'm just winging it here. I didn't have any commitments on what label I want to go on to what rolling pin. I just printed out a whole bunch and I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> For some of these, they're going to go more vertically than horizontally. So this one would have been wrapping around each other. You wouldn't have really saw the fresh pie. So this is one that I printed out on that little bit thicker cardstock. So the same thing, I'm just putting the Mod Pod on the back of this. Paper staying down just fine. I don't need the press and seal for this. Oh my gosh, there's just so many labels, so many things I want to share with how beautiful these labels printed out and how I love to share rolling pins. So unfortunately, fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, it is just, this is just what I'm doing. I'm just taking a label, figuring out which one is size appropriate to the rolling pin I have in front of me. And that's really how I am choosing which label to go. Now, I'm sure you guys are now realizing that these are just going to be decorative rolling pins. And yep, a lot of people just use these kind in their decor.
Then this is definitely why I picked and cut printed out a lot of the different colors. I wasn't really sure on the rolling pin color itself what color would be pleasing to the eye. So I will just put them in my hoards. I will save the excess that I do not need for today's project and hopefully they sell well and I can still pick up rolling pins to do this on. Now these are some of my copy and paste ones that I copy and pasted off of Pinterest. It's a biscuit recipe, but it had the cute little animals. So these are just little bitty rolling pins. They're very thin. I'm not really sure what they were even used for, but I think they'll make great decor. So I definitely love this vintage paper and how it printed out. It has a nice little biscuit recipe on it. Yep, I might have a problem when it comes to rolling pins. I might have picked up a few. That's not even counting the ones that I redid for my booth or just resold for my booth. Oh my, yep, I have, I, I, rolling pin anonymous, please. I need to let that Mod Podge dry so I can move on to my next step. If you guessed, yep, I'm going to be painting the handles. And I have a few different colors that I picked out and I'm trying to match up with what the label is. That's why I didn't do anything pre before I put the labels down first. That way I can match up to the handles, whatever the label matched up with the rolling pin. So right now I'm just using my Alphabet or Multi-Use in black. And I just take a, I free it, I'm just taking a little bitty paintbrush and then just gingerly going along the handle next to the rolling part of it and then yep just painting this on now it'll probably take two coats drying in between but yep some of these are going to be black and then on for my next color i have this apple barrel red also so that's going to be matching up with some of these labels as this apple pie you can tell it has that little gingham red on there so what a perfect match and when it comes to painting like on this rolling pin there's always like that perfect stopping point so you know this one is all one this one was carved all as one rolling pin so i'm just going in very gingerly trying to get that tip to make a nice straight line and then on the end of it it also has another line of demarcation where i'm just going to leave that end the natural for right now and then just paint in the in-between. So though I don't have that vintage green color that you see a lot of the rolling pins, I do have moss and I have a little bit of truffle. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the moss and then just add a little bit of the truffle in with it getting kind of that vintage green. And also I wanna be matching up with that one buttermilk biscuit label. Final color for painting some of the handles is just going to be straight truffle, which is a brown, a very dark brown color. And now after my handle paint has dried, I'm going back in with some paint sandpaper. And now I'm going to give these some distressing. I'm just going to take a 220 sandpaper and just kind of naturally let it distress where it would distress if you're using it. Especially if there's any sharp edges like on this one, just makes that distressing really easy. I want them to look like they've been used and that they are worn. So sandpaper and distressing the handles it was my best option. I've had my handles all distressed the way that I want them. A lot of this is a chalk paint that needs to be sealed in or the acrylic paint needs to be sealed in. So I'm just going in with some of the Chippy Barn a top coat and a foam brush and just running it over these handles. And then also I'm going to be taking it over the label. Also I needed I did not put Mod Podge on the top of that. I wanted that to dry nice and flat. I wasn't going to do any antiquing distressing where it looked wrinkly, I want it just to stay flat, so now I need to seal this in. And I have another process that I'm going to be doing to these rolling pins to make them even look more aged. So I really need to keep that top coat just on the label. So if any gets on the offside, I need to wipe it off. Now I'll go ahead and set those all off to the side until that top coat is good and dry. 
How many of you all knew I was going to be using some antiquing wax to age these? But right now I'm still working on this bottle of folk art that has been in my house for a while. So I thought, you know what? Instead of going out to the shop and grabbing some more, I'm just going to start trying to use it. I've had this bottle for a very long time. A little bit goes a long way. And yep, I'm just rubbing it straight on just using a piece of cut off a piece of drop cloth and just rubbing it right on. I didn't pre-sand any of these rolling pins. I just left them as is. Any bumps, any bruises, anybody that used them as a hammer, that was that was perfectly fine. The more age to them, the better. So I'm going right over the entire rolling pin wood itself, along with the label, along with the ends, and along with my pre-painted handles. On this rolling pin, if I felt like it was going to go too dark because this one was really dry, I can just take a wet wipe or you can use some clear wax if you want to um, and wipe a little bit of the excess off. It depends on how this was a homemade rolling pin. I think it's very unique. So this was a perfect one to have in as a decor piece, but boy, did it really soak in this wax. Add in this wax really just tied this whole together. That label, that vintage label, the painted distress handles, and then just rubbing this wax on just gave them that nice aged look. Even the, this one had some kind of a finish on that was half coming off, but I didn't care. It was just supposed to look like they have been used and abused. I think this is one of those Dollar Tree rolling pins. So I think 99 cents, 49 cents I paid for it. So I wasn't really sure how this one would turn out whatsoever. But you know what? It was in my hoard. I'd picked it up. So it was going to get aged and label on it too. And even like this one, all the, the hammer, I think somebody might have used it as a hammer. It's too soft a wood to use as a hammer, by the way, on this one. This is just a nice soft pine, but it definitely get all that wax going and all that brown going into those gouges. Just, I, I don't know, guys, I absolutely love how these turn out. And I hope that they sell really well because I really enjoyed this project. have a little bonus in here that is not rolling pins a friend gave me a couple pieces that she was no longer using in her decor so I've had these for a little while trying to figure out what to do with them there weren't something that I wanted to paint I loved that rust but when I was looking in Etsy I'm like oh hello there yes I will print you out and put you on the front of these for these I'm doing the Mod Podge and I just when I could print them out from Etsy they were 8 by 11 they were a full sheet so I sized them down to fit onto these containers but I want these to be a little bit more wrinkly I want to be able to distress the edges of them the way that they are printed they're really made to be and I cut them in a straight line so I'm just going to Mod Podge it down and then I'm going to put more Mod Podge on the top of it and I'm going to let it wrinkle I want it to wrinkle and yeah I mean everything's always about what the look I find if I don't put anything on top of it when it's drying you can get a flatter look but if you want that age and you want those wrinkles then put some more of your top coat or some more Bond Podge over the top of it And then this one printed out a little bit bigger than I thought my measurements were, but I was like, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Like I said, after it dries, I'm going to do a little bit of distressing on it. After the Mod Podge dries, I'm just taping off around the side because I don't want to accidentally, I'm going to be using some very coarse 60 grit sandpaper to distress it, rough up the edges of this paper that I had just Mod Podge on. So the tape is just to protect that I don't, um, gouge into what I don't want to come off. So I'm, yep, I'm just taking it along those edges and just taking it off. If you can see close up, the print itself was meant to be kind of jagged and when I cut it, it was cut straight. But this is a technique that'll just give me that more of an aged, like the labels falling off look. After I get it the way that I want it distressed, I'm going back in with some more of that antiquing wax and just going over those nice white edges now. And that's going to tie these two pieces all together and make it look like this label's always been there.
Okay, what did you think? Oh my gosh, I am absolutely in love. I probably will start picking up more rolling pins. Okay, no, no, no. I gotta hold on and see how they sell. So they're definitely definitely just a decor piece. So I have to see if people are inter interested in just displaying rolling pins. So I have quite a few to sell, but oh my gosh, I just had so much fun. Along with these little canisters behind me when I ran across those sunflowers, I'm like, okay, well, there's some more. The nice thing about it is it's downloaded into my computer, so I have use of it now. I paid for it. I gave them credit for um, using their font. So, oh my gosh, all just beautiful images. So just check out Etsy. It's a couple bucks, guys. It's I mean, it's, and then it's downloaded onto your computer. So I hope I inspired you anyway today in today's video. And I hope, give me a quick comment. Is this something that you might try yourself? So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And if you're new and you're checking out my content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell. And we'll see you next time, guys. And you can see what I'm up to.